Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. In the midwinter of 1937, the city of Paducah and many parts of western Kentucky were covered by cold, muddy Ohio River water. This led to great misery and suffering. In midwinter 2009, the city of Paducah and much of western Kentucky was covered with ice and this too led to much misery and suffering. My guest today is an expert on the 1937 Paducah flood and a survivor of the ice storm. He is John Robertson, historian, author, and longtime history professor here at the college. Welcome back. Thank you. Well, you know, in history class, we say compare and contrast. Can you compare and contrast the 37 flood with the great ice storm of 09 in terms of, of its effect on the people? The 37 flood at the time was considered the worst disaster that we have ever experienced. Uh, I wrote an article for the uh, Kentucky Humanities Council uh, on that flood. The title was Hell on the Ohio. Appropriately named. And it was, uh, came out in the April issue of 2007. And in that I, I noted the uh, Red Cross after the flood was over, uh, made the, the following uh, assessment of the size and the extent of the damage. Uh, in its report of the 37 flood, the Red Cross noted that this natural disaster was bigger than the other two biggest disasters in the recorded history of the United States. That's the 1927 flood on the lower Mississippi that almost wiped out New Orleans, you know, they breached mm -hmm. the uh, levee to prevent now, it. Now, is that the flood that caused Columbus to be moved up on the... Essentially, yeah. yes. It destroyed the levee there and, right. and, and, and exposed moved Columbus town. to the hilltop. That plus the fact that the Mississippi had changed its channel and was cutting on the Kentucky side, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and previously it had been on the Missouri side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that ended the, the city of Columbus. Uh, they moved it up on the hill. Well, uh, in... The two other disasters that they talked about is they was the Great Dust Bowl, right? which was just before the 37 flood, right. where you looked up, you know, and you saw Oklahoma pass over Paducah. Right. Uh, sun turned a little bit dark. So the 37 flood is a marker. And, of course, prior to that, everybody up here talked about, well, the 1913 flood. If you look at the actual data, Going back to when Paducah first became a town in 1830, you have periodic flooding. And it seems that each one became progressively worse. Mm. And the 1913 flood, they thought, well, you know, we'll never get any more of that. It actually got into downtown Paducah. And the people always thought Paducah was high and dry. Uh, so, but they had fun with that flood. They got out and played and there was no real damage. But the 37th flood is unique. It was a winter mm -hmm. flood. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about ice storm. To make things worse, just before the flood, we had an ice storm that paralyzed all of this area, western Kentucky. It knocked down all the telephone lines, all the telegraph lines, and it tended to isolate the community. Mm -hmm. So that when the big flood came, uh, people were not aware of how bad off we were. And, of course, that's one of the remarkable things about the prison condition. Suddenly, everybody knew, and the relief uh, and the uh, assistance came very quickly. That was not true in 37. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I expect that the extent of the damage is going to be greater in the present because there were more people uh, here, uh, if, if nothing else. And uh, it was prolonged. And... We have yet to really assess. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, in 1937, that flood, the Ohio River at Paducah, Kentucky, was 20 miles wide. That's an estuary. That's yeah. an estuary, not a river. Uh, what happened was when it flooded, it got into the lowlands over in Illinois. Right. And it went all the way to Harrisburg. Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, it was not just the Paducah side or the Kentucky side. Mm -hmm. It was all up and down. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And at Paducah, it was worse than almost any place else because we got the overflow from everything upstream. Mm -hmm. It was bad in Louisville, but not compared to what we had here. Because mm -hmm. we got the accumulation from the Wabash and the, the Tennessee and the Cumberland, you name all of them, the Crittenden, and the, uh, the, all of those uh, little streams coming into it. So, and we were late getting help. And that made it worse. And the fact that it was during the winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you brought with with you several photographs, yes. remarkable photographs of the flood. If we could look at some of those, and we'll have John comment on them. Well, the 13 flood. This is the 1913 flood. Uh, it was fun. People got out and rode around. Two guys and, on a telephone pole. Yeah, they were yeah. climbing up. Hey, let's yeah. go out and show off. Yeah. Uh, you see the guy in the uh, uh, on the right. He's got on hip boots. Right. Uh, the other pictures have him waiting around. And the South uh, 4th Street, you can see the Yeah, the, uh, and most sign. of the damage was downtown. And there's famous pictures of a, the trolley, the streetcar, was running, and it could still run through the water. And people were hanging onto the side of it and just uh, uh, they had fun. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't the case in the 13th. Now, the 13th time. flood was when? In April? I believe. It was yeah. in the spring of the year. Uh, yeah. Spring of the year. And mm -hmm. uh, that's the other thing. This 37 flood hit was in, in the January and bitter, February. bitter mm -hmm. cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, here is the most famous picture right. showing the, the clock, which is the center uh, meeting place downtown. Right. It's 20 and minutes till 12. If you look picture. at the river, uh, it's up almost to the uh, ceiling of the lower level. Wow. Uh, now, um, I've talked to several people who were there. One was uh, a gentleman who was the vice president of the Citizens Bank, shown there on the left. He was downtown in a, a rowboat, a John boat, which is, uh, well, they were dangerous to begin with. Not because much freeboard. They had maybe two inches of freeboard. Right, right. Uh, they were built hurriedly. And uh, right here at this corner, there is a, for some reason, a cross current coming in uh, that when a craft hit it, he was rowing along and suddenly he found himself out of control. He and the other guy paddling and they looked up and they were headed right straight into one of those windows of one of those stores downtown. Mm. And they bailed out into that icy water. And think about it, everything is closed downtown. There's no place to go and you're soaking wet. They were fortunate. They found one of the second floors uh, in that block where, where that picture is, somebody was hiding out because mm -hmm. you weren't supposed to be down there. Right, it was down. martial law, right. Martial law. Mm -hmm. And he was burning coke so it wouldn't produce any smoke. So they got up there and dried out enough to proceed. Yeah. But uh, you wouldn't wow. think about having a major current no. going down. You think it'd be slack water. Yeah. yeah. Now this shows up uh, uh, Kentucky Avenue, and that's the old city hall. Right. In the background. There were some steamboats that uh, uh, were here. Uh, one of them was having its engines worked on, and it supplied uh, small powered boats. Uh, uh, Jimmy Curtis uh, was one of the crew of one of them, and uh, throughout the 37 flood, he acted as a courier and as an ambulance mm -hmm. driver using the boat. Mm -hmm. And if you look, the river right there is frozen over. Wow, sure And so is. not only did you have to worry about uh, water, the cold. Oh, the, it must oh, be brutal. 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 Uh, City Hall uh, had to be abandoned because of the damage it suffered during the, uh, the flood. And notice also downtown so many huge poles with cross arms. You had a plethora of wires running around. Mm -hmm. And they were hot during the flood until they finally uh, cut them off for a long time though, they had power actually downtown. Wow. So, um, but there were very few electric heaters. But uh, that, that was sort of a hidden danger that you sure would watch be. out Electrocution, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, and the extent, is just as far as one can see, was nothing but what? The rivers, uh, have the, riv the river has made the streets into canals. Like Venice, Italy. Yes, yeah. like in yeah. Venice. And people tried for a long time to last it out. They'd go up to the second floor. But after a while, when the pumping station went out on the water, 
uh, well, all the toilets didn't work, and so what do you do? You dumped your slop jar out of the uh, porch into the mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. water, mm -hmm. and the water was filthy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me. yeah. And you would see carcasses of animals floating by, and uh, yeah. it stank, and it had oil on it. Oh, it would have, yeah. yeah. Uh, you didn't want to, this is the old courthouse. Right. And for a while, a lot of people uh, uh, went there for refuge. And even there, they segregated it. They put the blacks on one side and the whites on the other. And after uh, a night or two, well, it stank so bad because of the um, uh, sewer and all of that. Oh, uh, Some people also tried to take refuge in the uh, Lincoln High School in the black community. And they got up there and, you know, the second floor was good, solid building. But then what do you do for heat and what do you do for right. food? Right. And uh, uh, Oscar Cross used to tell the story that uh, uh, he was told by a man who had a grocery store in the area, uh, just go in and take what you can find because I've lost it anyhow. And so uh, the people who were living in the, uh, the uh, uh, Lincoln High School, uh, they would send expeditions out to get food and water. Mm -hmm. They'd go over to the railroad yards of the NC and STL and uh, they had a water tower there to put water in steam engines. And so uh, for a while they drank out of it until the health department declared it not to be safe because they were getting so far down they were getting mm -hmm. sediment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the meals were always, well, uh, a surprise party. Because why? The labels they brought were in cans gone. Yeah. and all the labels sure, had were gone. gone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And we did a project yeah. uh, to interview people from the flood a couple of years back. And one of the things so many of them said was, uh, remember, I remember beans, I remember beans, I'll never eat another bean as long as I live. Uh, but they tried to, to ride it out. But finally it got so bad that mm -hmm. the health department was afraid of... Um, uh, plague and disease, and mm -hmm. so they ordered everybody out and brought in regular army troops to enforce a curfew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this looks toward the river and uh, from the Cobb Hotel, and for a while, the city government moved into the Cobb. In fact, they would have a, uh, there was a little mezzanine inside the Cobb, uh, and you could get to it from the, pulling your boat up to the uh, little, the marquee, marquee yeah, yeah, that yeah. came out. I've heard that. And go in and, you know, they lost heat. And so for a while, uh, a lot of the people who were uh, had been working downtown tried to, to last it out in the hotels downtown. And I remember uh, O.K. Vic, who used to be on our faculty mm -hmm. here, was a boy mm -hmm. scout at the time, and he, uh, out in the Lone Oak area. And so the, that boy scout troop organized an expedition, and they put on their uh, packs and walked five miles out to a um, butcher uh, on uh, uh, Wildcat Road, I think it was. And they loaded up with food, and then they walked back, and they t put them in boats and took them down, and they delivered uh, the, the food to the wow. uh, people. Wow. Later, when they d abandoned the city hall in the uh, Irving Cobb Hotel and moved it out to the uh, West End. Uh, the scouts went back in and stripped every bed in the uh, uh, the Cobb Hotel and took that out to the refugee centers in the West End. Wow. And he also told the story of a uh, in the refugee camps. Uh, they had to make some compromises on um, well, uh, genteel uh, living conditions, shall we say. Uh, there was this one man who uh, uh, found out later that he was sharing the same bed with a young girl. Uh -huh. He worked one shift and she worked another and they never did meet during the whole flood. But uh, they, uh, uh, social conventions were sort of pushed to the limits. Right. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, that's Broadway Methodist Church, is That's it Broadway Methodist Church and the picture cropped the uh, spire. Well, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Well, why is that stubbed off like that? It wasn't uh, like chopped off okay. by uh, well, that's the good. hand of God or anything. Okay, that's just, good. Uh, uh, the frame of the picture. But you see Broadway there, and if you look along the sides of it, periodically you will see abandoned cars. Right. 
When this flood started, there was a, a meeting taking place at the uh, Ritz Hotel uh, honoring uh, a man named John Stone, who was the agricultural agent for this area. He was the father of the federal judge, oh, John yeah, Stone. Oh, yeah, sure. And uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Robert Gordon Matheson, uh, the dean of the particular junior college, was attending that meeting. Uh, and uh, as he tells the story, um, uh, everybody got worried and uh, it was below freezing. And so um, the cars wouldn't start and then the water started coming so quickly. By the time the meeting ended, he couldn't get back to his home on 7th Street. Mm. And so finally he, he found a way around on using kind of a natural levee uh, and got home and he ran his car up on the ash heap that mm -hmm. used to be behind every house that burned coal, of right. course. And he had the engine up high. The thing was covered with water in the flood. But when he went back to get it, since he had it up, uh, the electrical uh, things were not damaged and the mortar started, actually. Wow. But so many people weren't that fortunate. Mm -hmm. because that intense cold, they couldn't start their mortars. And so all the time of the flood, Paducah streets were lined with abandoned vehicles. Mm -hmm. And they became a, well, a hazard to navigation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you didn't have street traffic, you had boat traffic. Right. They ran uh, tows up Broadway. Now this is an uh, example of uh, about 11th or 12th Street. And uh, Mr. John Oschlager had his drugstore there on the lower level, and you see it's underwater. So uh, he then moved his stock up to the second floor, and one of the things that was in great demand was whiskey. Uh, keep you warm. Yeah, keep you warm. And more than that, uh, some people uh, actually bathed in whiskey. Really? It would uh, sponge off and... Uh, well, yeah, it would, yeah, it's in a so, cleanser you know, sort, yeah. Uh, anyhow... He would, uh, somebody would come by and they would um, yell or knock on the, something there with, a, with an oar and he would uh, come out the window there and see what they wanted and he would take a bucket and lower the whiskey down to them in the boat. They would take the whiskey out, put the money in the bucket and he'd pull it back up. Well, very quickly he learned to change his uh, sales technique. He lowered the whiskey down, the guy took the bottle and waved at him and drove it <laughs> off. I'd so heard that story. The money went in first after that. Yeah. And this is uh, uh, the Cobb Hotel, and you can see the marquee there where the. Uh, right, the which will, will become the, the boat now. Uh, yeah. And if you look on the left, you can see the top of a car just barely sticking out. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the, uh, the uh, church, the Catholic Church right. there in San Francisco, the same, right. as you can see the front of it, and the marquee. Right. The marquee of the, uh, the movie kept Sonia Heine all during the flood. Is that right? Ice yeah. skater, and of course now, they had ice skating. Uh, Saker was the photographer. He was a photographer, yeah. and some of great pictures taken during this period yeah. were from yeah. his studio. Right. And it was in the hotel. Sure. And there was also a whiskey uh, store there, and Charlie, um, uh, well, one of the people who tried to ride the flood out uh, would go by there and load up his boat, and then he was the one who used the uh, the whiskey to uh, to bathe. And he wow. he also went out and uh, moved his family to higher ground on Third Street. Yeah, he just occupied a house and went in and took it over. Wow. Now this is the at the time the largest uh, employer in the Commonwealth of Kentucky was the IC Railroad at Paducah. Right. They manufactured the 2600 class steam locomotives at this and the uh, little curved horseshoe shaped building it's at the, the old top roundhouse. is the roundhouse. Sure is. And uh, so uh, this is at, uh, what would it be, 19th? In Kentucky Avenue. Yeah, yeah Kentucky Somewhere Avenue. Somewhere in that area, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you see it just completely flooded. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, running short of time. If we could go to some of the ice pictures and talk yes. about those if we could. Uh, there again, really quickly. Uh, yes, look at this. That is a shot in Mayfield, and pretty typical of the damage in the area. But well, um, look at the coating on yeah. every twig. Right. The weight was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And when they cracked, it sounded like a rifle. It did. Off. It did. We had five poles break on our street. Mm. Uh, and you can see the damage to the top of the tree there. 
Absolutely. It looked like artillery burst as it just shredded the trees it, from the yeah, top downward. Yeah, yeah. Oh, me. That, That's I'll tell dangerous. you a story about that power pole. Um, about five minutes after I took that picture, that pole snapped. Yes. Eight feet off the top, it weighed 3,000 pounds. And again, you talk about lack of communication. I knew that pole was extremely hot, and but no telephone service, so my son and I got in the car and we drove to the West Kentucky RECC office on West Broadway in Mayfield, and they said, don't worry about it, there's no power going to Mayfield at all. Oh. And so, uh, but that, by the way, is still resting in our neighbor's front yard yeah. after they put up the, another pole. But well, that's that transformer and the whole bit. It does, but you can really see the weight of that ice ah. on those lines. Unbelievable. And that, look, at that is a half an inch thick. Mm -hmm. On a little twig like On that. On a twig. Hmm. Yeah. Just and everywhere across this whole area. It wasn't just Paducah. Oh, no. Flood. No. No. Concentrated here, but this in, is... In fact, some of the uh, worst damage is in Lyon County Lyon and Crittenden County, County and, and up, up that way. Uh, that That's poignant there. It's just... It's just uh, and and that's, that's what happened after the picture was taken. Yeah. It just came down like that, and that was all over. There was something like 1,500 poles down in Graves County or 900 in Carlisle County. Um, Hickman County, uh, just absolute devastation. Uh, what is it? You can put it in with three poles a day or something like oh, that? Oh, it was very difficult. Well, to replace that pole, it took them all day. They brought yes. a bare pole out, had to put the cross arms mm -hmm. on, the insulators. It took forever to do that. Yeah. And uh, uh, just all over this area, just amazing stories. And again, you talk about the isolation uh, when you had no communication. Yes. Uh, and uh, all we had to heat our house is a wood-burning fireplace, and it got a little bit chilly. Oh, I was, I, was com I, I was confident, you know. I picked up my cell phone, and it didn't work. Exactly. <laughs> Even the cell phones were Exactly, out. exactly. Isolation. It, 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 it really, was, you became aware. It, it did, and, of course, I remember reading stories about the flood, about how quiet the city was at night. Yes. Same thing. Uh, before they put the curfew on, uh, we drove around a couple of nights, and it was eerie. It was just, just no lights mm -hmm. anywhere. Uh, and getting one of those off, how do you proceed? Yeah, yeah. On your own, you can't. You just oh, have no, to. Oh, no, no, no. And, and the cleanup, of course, as you can see, that tree split. That's the Graves County Courthouse yes. in Mayfield. That tree is just, uh, there is something left of it. it, it it's not, not much to it. Uh, but again, that's Mayfield's band director, Darren Abram, who drove by. And, and I said, I'll take your picture. And, and he waved. And everyone's in really good spirits. And, and that's yeah. another thing. Yeah. The picture's the flood. I've seen you, many photos of the flood with people. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, that's your shot. Yeah. Now, what's this, the, the poor fellow's doing the best he can there? Yeah, he, yeah I gave him a little help. But uh, it shows you the, the concentration of ice on the smallest twig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that whole backyard is just a layer of ice that you could it skate to them. And you know what was, to me, so ironic was, was the streets were fairly clear. Yes. Uh, there was no problem driving around except for the obstacles, the mm -hmm. down lines, the down yeah. trees. Uh, but and so that many was so people strange. went through there and they didn't even, because you can't see those lines dangling down. Right. It's like going through a, a, a maze or right. a trap right. and uh, a truck would snag one of them. And well, as a matter of fact, one did in, in Mayfield after this was over with and we all had power and we were rejoicing over that. Uh, in that windstorm that yeah. came a few days later, uh, it blew a, a main line down over the Purchase Parkway, and these trucks hit it mm -hmm. and broke the poles, and about half of Mayfield was without power for several hours um, to do that. But, uh, but, you know, I just kept thinking of the flood, the isolation you felt. We didn't even have a transistor radio. Mm -hmm. I went and borrowed one yeah. and listened to the Super Bowl on the transistor radio. It would have been a great game to see, but anyway, it was... And you know, you, you turned well. We turned the radio to channel six, and got television mm -hmm. over the radio. Yeah. But it was a lack of communication. And you were talking about refugee places, uh, Grace County High School. In fact, Janet Blythe on our staff, uh, she spent some time out there. Uh, there were National Guard troops uh, helping out. That was remarkable. The governor of Kentucky mobilized the entire guard. Mm -hmm. First time it's been done. And of course, we were a federal disaster yes. area, and, and it's. Uh, but you know, it was interesting too about the '37 flood was the cleanup. How long that took? Oh me! And who knows how long the cleanup for this ice storm will take? It's going to be probably mm -hmm. up in the summer. Uh, 
if you're traveling toward Mayfield on 45 North, the, the, the north parking lot of the old General Tire plant is the depository for the brush. <laughs> and it is an enormous, look like a thicket yes. that goes on forever. But uh, um, again, I kept thinking of the parallels uh, between the flood, the isolation, the time of year it was, the dislocation. And uh, I read somewhere that this affected maybe a million people, this ice storm, all told. I don't know. Did you read any numbers on that? No, but I wouldn't be, you know, that would be, I would, I would think it would be more than yeah. that. But some of the counties in western Kentucky are you know, lost Just, population. And, and, yeah. and uh, one of the worst hit, of course, was uh, Hickman County. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Hickman is uh, the oldest uh, county right. in the whole Purchase right. area. Right, right, Another thing, too, we're talking about people leaving the area. They did. Uh, it, you would be hard-pressed to find a hotel room in Clarksville, in, in Martin, mm -hmm. Tennessee, in Union City, even as far as Nashville. Well, um, my son and his, his family, his wife and uh, children, they went down and stayed in Nashville. Right, uh, because of, of the, and again, I think. couldn't find any place in the short of there. And, and you think, too, today we're so dependent upon electricity, and this just paralyzed yes. an entire region. And, uh, of course, people began to get the generators, and they were coming in toward the end. And mm -hmm. we even broke down and bought a kerosene heater, which helped a little bit. Yeah. But, again, it, it's we've put all of our eggs in one electronic basket. And I, for 11 days, we didn't have power. And I didn't have the internet, and that oh, I, that was terrible because oh, I, yes, yes. <laughs> I well, mean we're always of isolation. It, it, is, it is on the internet, and, and was, I had uh, uh, telephone for a while. Uh, it was on lying on the ground, but it worked. Uh, but missing cable and uh, oh, yep, not being able to keep up with what's going on, everything you just felt like you were, you know, by yourself. Right. That isolation it was, was a perfect word. It, it was. And again, I remember reading accounts of the flood about people who did try to ride it out. And some did. Yes. Some stayed the whole time. But again, you're on a second floor of a building and the food, how do you cook the food? I mean, no. and, 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 and I heard the story about, about the tin cans, the, yes. the, the, the surprise potluck, literally, <laughs> with it. But uh, well, um, one thing that didn't happen this time that happened in 37 was uh, the disparity in the treatment of refugees. Mm -hmm. In 37, the black refugees from Paducah, uh, well, one group of them, were shipped all the way to Knoxville, Tennessee, simply because no community would take them. Right, right. And they stayed on campus, the University of Tennessee. Yeah. And uh, uh, Mr. Robinson from here was uh, interviewed by us, and uh, he pointed out that uh, they gave them new clothes when they got there. They were welcomed, and but at night they locked them in. Mm. Now that is a different era. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was uh, thirty-seven. That's just the way that yeah. life was. Yeah. We're out of time, but thank you for coming. And and maybe one day they'll look back on this ice storm like the thirty-seven flood is another one of those, uh, pardon the pun, watershed eras. <laughs> I'm Barry Craig. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,